Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Max Plane Dawn of War Unification. Today I have a, another faction guide for you. You heard that probably uh, quite some time already, but yeah, the faction we will look into today is the Sisters of Battle, a vanilla faction that got quite a lot of new stuff to play around with in version 6.9. To understand what uh, Sisters of Battle are, I'm not really the perfect uh, guy for lore questions, but they, they have armor but it's not like they are not like i don't i don't understand they are like space marines but also not because only like the male genes can prevail whatever this nonsense is um yeah they um have similar units in your space marines they have like your standard uh, more or less tactical squad you can think of you have uh, a jump a troop that fills a similar but not the same role and stuff like that you have um, yeah, and they have more, how should I say, um, they focus more on flamers and melters, so kind of similar to uh, salamanders in that sense. Yeah, and they have a special resource, which is faith. We will talk about this resource uh, in a bit when we we'll jump into the safe game. So, see you there. And here we are on the safe game. Before we talk about uh, buildings and units and stuff, we will talk about resources and unit caps. The resources. Um, in the beginning are pretty standard, you have requisition, you have power, requisition from capturing point, building listing points, getting upgrades, you know, the deal. Power also pretty similar, you build generators to get power, increase the power ink outcome with upgrades and stuff like that. But this bar at the bottom is the faith bar. Faith is a special resources, uh, a special resource, um, f um, how should I say, only used by the Sisters of Battle. I have a little faith over you that will be on your screen right now. It tells you how to increase the uh, threshold. The threshold at the beginning is zero, can get to 100 if you upgrade uh, icons of faith or whatever they're called on your listing post. I will, yeah, holy icons they're called. Um, we will go and look at the listing post when we look through the buildings. Uh, you can have up to maximum of five uh, icons um, granting you a maximum of 100 faith. Um, there are also abilities that cost pretty much uh, all your faith, so you will need it. Later on you see that also the uh, um, cost increases. The first icon is rather cheap, the second one increases and it gets uh, even uh, more expensive on the way. There are different abilities that require faith. We will talk about the abilities when we will talk about the units, but I have it here in the overview as well on the bottom left. And on the right hand side you have the so-called faithful units. Faithful units uh, create a faith income. Uh, note that the uh, HQ that you have at the beginning also creates one faith. Uh, one uh, in is one every 10 seconds, so you can think of it as 0 0.1 a second as it is with requisition and power as well. Um, and there's also later an upgrade called Smaterous Gifts or something like that, that uh, some faithful units, not all, but most, if they die, you get a, how should I say, uh, some faith directly. So it's not income uh, over time, it's just a flat five or something, for example, um, faith is the unit dies. Normally you do not want to have your unit go down, so, um, Questionable upgrade in, in my book, but it can be uh, s probably used to turn the tide if you have probably uh, suddenly a lot of faith and can use the faithful abilities. But yeah, so um, get this upgrade uh, if you like. I normally skip it. Um, yeah, this overview will also be in my drive folder, uh, so you can look it up yourself later. Okay, enough of the faith. Now we will now look at the unit caps. You have standard caps, you have squad cap, you have vehicle cap, you start off with the standard 10-0 and go up to 2020 by the normal means. Uh, you can go upgrade your maximum infantry cap by even more if you build a Shrine of the Archangel. This is your Titan uh, dedicated building that increases your maximum cap of infantry from 20 to 22. So you can have 22 to 20 with this faction, which is really nice as their bigger units all require you to have infantry pop. So let's uh, focus on that part. Uh, how do you upgrade your um, 
squads you can build. Infantry has three upgrades in your so-called barracks. I have it researched already, increasing three times, only plus three. So you end up with 19. Um, these upgrades do another thing. They also increase the um, squad uh, reinforcement rate. So it's nice to have these upgrades also doing some additional stuff than just giving you additional pop cap. For infantry, uh, the pop cap also increases for uh, the Shrine of the Archangel. It not only increases your maximum by two, but also your you could could say it's standard by four and squad leaders some squad leaders uh, increase the uh, the, um, the squad cap these are imagifiers um, they increase plus one and the mistress from the repentia sister squad also increases the uh, uh, squad cap by one vehicle cap is increased similar by upgrades you get um, five vehicle cap for building your vehicle building which is your manufactorum and it has three upgrades uh, that improve the, uh, um, increase the cap by plus five each, so you get your 20. And these also have a secondary effect, they increase the production rate of all your vehicles. So also, again, nice to have a secondary effect on them. Okay, that's the resources and unit caps. Out of the way, we will now talk about the buildings. Your main building is the ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical cap chapel, or whatever you, you pronounce that. Um, this gives you your first builder units, your capping units, and some hero units later on. Note that some buildings have these loud hailers. They are enabled by research. You can click on it, and then uh, nearby morale uh, of enemy troops get, um, how should I say, reduced, and your own morale gets increased. So you get this little. I don't know, nonsense here, um, it's lights, it shouldn't it be like sound, whatever. Most buildings have that, the upgrade is I think rather cheap and tier 1 so you can use it uh, in a defensive manner, but only your, your bigger buildings have it, so your listing posts for example do not have access to it. Uh, as you upgrade it also increases in size and shapes, the first are the outer uh, things that get bigger and later on the thing in the middle as well, so we have kind of an uh, orientation if you scout in any base what tier they are. For unit production buildings you have these uh, going on, you have the Adapter Sohotas Convent which is your infantry building, also has the loud halos. Then you have a Manufactorum for your um, vehicles and your singular flyer, also has the loud halos. Then you have the Shrine of the Living Saint for your criticals and one of a special cannon is here, so you have your, your relics, not your criticals, your relic unit 3. They share a cap, so you, you can only get one of these uh, uh, living saints here. And then you have your Shrine of the Archangel, which is your Titan kind of building. And you get Saint Mina and Saint Silvana. Um, I'm not sure if they are both tier 1 titans. They are they're kind of... They require the same as a tier 1 titan, as you can see here, but they are cheaper. They only cost 300, 300. So in a sense, if you get both, they are limited to one normally. I play unlimited here. If you uh, get both, they are, I would say, equivalent to having one tier 1 titan on the field. And your tier 2 titan is your Archangel Alicia Dominica, which is also available here. Um, that's the unit productions, and you have upgrade buildings. You have the Prismatine Sanctuary, which is basically more or less your armory, where you get upgrades. I have the squad leader upgrades already. There is um, an armor upgrade in tier 2 and a damage upgrade in tier 3. And you have a weapon increase, and this one gives you a, a charge for your Seraphims and Repentia Sisters. Also has the Loud Hailers. And here's an upgrade that I do not understand how good it is, or if it's not good. I am. Um, I think we will talk about upgrades in the tech tree as usual, so uh, I'm not getting uh, distracted here. There's a second upgrade building, the Holy Reliquary, which is uh, also tech building and needed for s most heroes, has hero upgrades inside of it, like the standard hero upgrades, but also the Martyrus Gifts, which I, Martyrus Gift, which I told you earlier that it gives you faith if a faithful unit dies. Then you have some uh, Ecclesiatus, this is income upgrade, you could say, for the for the um, faith. So if I click it, it should go up, yes, you see it here can go up even further. Also increases the morale, I think, of uh, your units around. So it has some two-sided effects. So I uh, take this as a little bonus for the resources uh, I told you before. And as you can see here, your main buildings have these loud halos. 
your bigger uh, shrines do not and going for further on the line your listening posts and plasma generators do not have it these are your income buildings i will talk quickly about the icons here uh, you can see here i have built five already this is an only an how should i say a theoretical cost you can see here if one uh, dies the cost gets reduced because you have less on the field so this is the maximum cost as is in the list so you have more upgrades you have to forti can fortify them twice you have like inferno cannons that are really good at uh, dealing aoe infantry damage not as good against a single target and then you can also add this holy icon so it is shiny and, and gives you increased capability cap cap capability capacity of faith the capacity is always full because i play on death mode here uh, defending you can do with turrets. The turrets are inferno turrets and have melter upgrades here. This one has the melter upgrade. This is an inferno turret and you have mines. Um, interestingly enough, I don't know why that is actually, but the footprint for these turrets are bigger than normal turrets, at least in my mind. And the, for the mines are also bigger than normal mines. At least that's uh, my feeling here. Maybe I'm wrong with that. Um, this should cover the buildings. Of course, you have a thermoplasma generator as well, which I cannot show here because there is no slack deposit on this map. Okay, now talk about the units. We will, as the usual, start with the uh, commanders and builder unit. The builder unit is in uh, servitor, similar to the uh, SM servitor. It builds, it repairs, it has no attack but it has one very, very interesting ability, Dismantle. Dismantle does damage to an um, enemy building. Maybe we can even show it. Let him walk over here. It takes four seconds to take off. So it's, uh, if you see uh, like a uh, Ecclesia Servitor moving close to, your, close to your buildings, you might as well focus it down. It does not have a lot of HP and the ability takes quite a long time to go off. But you will see here that it does significant uh, damage. It does damage more. I don't think it's percentage based in that sense, but it does more damage against bigger buildings than it does against uh, low buildings. But you see here, it is also, I think, random. This is about 10% health going down here. You can have up to four servitors. So if they all go off, the, your HQ is severely damaged and the cooldown isn't the greatest. So there is a uh really nice uh cheese strat that i like to use on certain maps where you can sneak in the enemy base shrine of exilion here is probably not the best because they're always listening posts guiding the, the entrance but yeah you you can make it work and it's also particularly useful against for example necrons that want to pr um, defend their precious uh generators and if they use the overcharge this servitor can make them pay for it okay your commanders you have access to there's a capper commander your missionary missionaries can cap they aren't the, the, the fastest in the capping i have to say but um, this is also maybe just a feeling of mine it has this shotgun here and his stuff gets a lot of more health though and with their first health upgrade you can get um, the blessed armor increases the health of um, all infantry units you have by quite amount but uh, increase doubles the health of the missionary so the missionary benefits quite a lot by this armor research has uh, detection so this is your de tier one detector unit and ah yeah the holy icon i forgot also gives you detection capabilities um, all your strategic points have uh, limited detection in a small radius the holy icon increases that detection radius by quite a bit um, the missionary has these abilities that um, also affect the squad he's attached to he lay hands gives you a heal over time it is uh, quite a long lasting effect uh, so it's not like a big health boom in in one second or two it's a uh, more uh, increased health regeneration you could think of for quite some time it has emperor's touch which is very interesting um emperor's touch uh it stays ranged weapons temporarily shoot holy flames which are effective versus all armor types so it basically changes in the in the game sense in the in the how should i say how it works in uh, in the engine it replaces temporarily replaces the weapons um, to have these blessed uh, weapons that shoot out these yellow dots. So the uh, the damage of these shots is not increased by any upgrades or special weapons. All special weapons will also be replaced by these. Um, 
holy weapons you could think of holy bolters so um, if you have like a, a lot of heavy bolters and want to use it then you may not use it you have you know extra faith and they all are glowing and they shoot this holy holy stuff out of them and last but not least you have divine retribution which um, returns damage to detectors similar to the necron uh, what is it called this this uh, field um, thingy he has so this is more um, is it only re returns damage doesn't state melee damage so maybe it's also ranged so uh, very useful on tankier squads the assists of battle by themselves aren't the most tankiest of them all so yeah so this is their abilities the last one is really pricey Emperor's Touch is really uh, good but um, also expensive with 50 uh, faith so yeah the healing you will see uh, for the most part earlier these two would also need to be researched it is in tier 2 and this in tier 3 if I remember correctly but we see on the tech tree then you have your cannoners, which is your primary commander, your quote-unquote force commander you could think of, kind of, don't quote me on the law please. Um, she has uh, the availability to get Inferno Pistol by normal upgrades, this is the campaign replacement unit, so she uh, looks a little uh, more badass, has this big old Gracia of Fire, which I think he can she can also get, but yeah, um, she's not always on flames like this. She has purifying light right from the get-go, needs 30 faith, so you need two icons to uh, have enough faith in the bank. Greatly reduces damage, weapon accuracy and also blinds them, so they don't see as far. So move her in, click on that and the enemy does not deal damage basically for a certain amount of time. And you can also um, research ascension, that must be researched. If you click it, you summon five unkillable avenging angels. They they do this um, good damage in melee of health and as I said are unkillable indestructible don't take damage so really really useful in that sense but as you saw the price here it's f f uh, 85 faith which is quite a lot there's some war gear that gives her and Rosarius makes her immune to damage uh, which does in, uh, in turn means that she does not die I don't think it's like real um, invulnerability real invulnerability in the sense of not taking damage similar to these uh, angels here is uh, very rare in Dawn of War 4 which is probably a good thing and if you have like the, the, the Selena Agna so the campaign variant available she gets also the um, ability in tier 3 if you have a relic and critical to exchange her once in a battle so only once if the Abyss Morphen Val dies once, she uh, cannot be refielded, she's only available once, has this pretty badass looking armor, also this shield here, um, yeah, look, it's an Abyss, not an Canoness, she does take over the purifying light and ascension ability and can now also teleport, so for me, in my mind, this is like the terminators of the uh, Sis of Battle, but again, don't quote me in any sense of law, but it's like how I feel how they are used in game. They feel like terminators. There's also a squad dedicated for that. Okay, enough of uh, the main woman here. Let's talk about tier two, where you get access actually to a man, the confessor. The confessor is a commander, has a damage increase aura. It's like I think it's 12% around. So at least f uh, just for that aura itself, it's pretty useful. Has a little booklet here so he can read stuff has a big old mace has a servitor skull firing away next to him and has two active abilities also costing faith it's the holy edict which stuns an enemy squad so you need to um, um, activate a squad and then you have emperor's wrath emperor's wrath needs to be researched it's really cheap for what it does it's a big aoe damage uh, thingy that um, does really good damage against infantry and i think it also damages buildings and vehicles so this emperor's wrath is um, very much uh, recommended to be researched. These abilities for the missionaries, you can research if you use missionaries better than I do, so this is not hard in a sense, but um, yeah, you need to remember to use the lay hands, is very useful. Uh, you see often purifying light, you see often, and the two abilities of the confessor you uh, will also see be used to create effect. Uh, new commander in tier 2, you could say, is the dogmata. This is um, you could think of a chaplain, has also this maze ability, has, um, I do not think a health regeneration aura, the aura does something uh, else, let me 
Uh, has an hour of authority that keeps all sisters alert and be judged. Aha, so it increases morale probably and has also this demoralizing shout to a target an enemy uh, squad similar to a chaplain. In tier 3 you get access to Pyos Vaughn. This little sister here has a big old flamer thingy here. Is a pretty good combatant, uh, good against this stuff, but does not have any aura. Um, special, so she boosts morale if attached, which is true from almost every commander in the game. So not not a special commander in uh, terms of what um, she adds to a squad in terms of auras and stuff, but a really good combatant by herself, but can be attached. Her range is also pretty good for having a flamer thingy here, so she's quite good. The Two more commanders I show here are, as I said, your tier. <coughs> sorry, your tier one Titan equivalent. You have Saint Mina here. Saint Mina is melee focused, um, protected by the blessing of the Emperor and and all the good stuff. Uh, really good at melee with her chain axe has also a combi flamer or what it is here, and can teleport into battle. And on the other hand, you have Saint Silvana. Saint Silvana is ranged combatant she is melee she is ranged uh, she has these wings to use it to jump around as the sniper rifle to do good damage against singular units like commanders and demons and can also launch an airstrike for the price of some requisition and power um, so rather pricey not sure if it's like m worth most of the time but you can see it has a really nice effect i think it is worth it if i see it here it looks like an artillery uh, shot special utility shot that some artillery units have. We will not talk about these uh, living saints for now, but we will talk about the cannon superior unit uh, uh, or the last name, uh, re yeah, whatever, uh, units, unit it is. Um, she is basically a uh, cannoness on a big old floaty chair here. Um, the chair itself has some flamers, so in terms of damage she isn't the biggest, but she is mobile and has an aura around her. Ah, da, da, da. This translates to auras that provide a hefty morale boost and increased range weapon accuracy. So it's morale increase and DPS increase. So having her around is always a good thing. She needs a critical, so you can think of her as a super heavy commander thingy. And she also has a Rosarius that uh, makes her immune to damage. Uh, if you know by chance, uh, a viewer, you, you the viewer, I, I'm looking at you. If you know if this Rosarius uh, invulnerability is like real invulnerability, like similar to the Imperial Guard Priest's ability, or is it more like uh, I don't die with one HP, like the uh, Emperor's Children drugs, like the Orc um, um, fight and juice and stuff like that, please let me know in the comments. Um, that would be really useful to know when to use it, um, the ability, for example. Okay, this is the commanders. Let's talk about the infantry. Uh, Sisters of Battle are a very infantry-centered faction, similar kind of to the orcs we have talked earlier. They have supportive vehicles, but yeah, the backbone is the infantry. And they start off with a really cool uh, new squad, the No White Sisters. These are, yeah, no white sisters. They aren't as powerful in the sense as your normal sisters. They do not have special weapons. They are a little cheaper. And what's the most important thing about the no white sisters is not their sisters themselves, but their various squad leaders. For example, the no white superior. You can mix mesh to have up to three of these, but uh, also two of each kind. So you can have two no white superiors and one imagifier and any way you can think of. Um, no white superior and the magifier are tier two, whereas the hospitaler is tier three. Hospitaler increases, um, uh, it's basically a apothecary, increases health regeneration. The no white magifier increases the health, the, 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 the general health, I think. Yeah, the stamina and health of the squad. And your no white superior is like a standard squad leader. Um, um, yeah, so she can use uh, a melter pistol and whatnot. So you can have two. Um, Superiors in one squad that can use, uh, not melter pistols, the uh, Inferno pistols that are really, really strong in tier 2. And the uh, Novite Superior has access to the Phosphor grenades and Crack grenades. So both a grenade for and the Phosphors are anti-infantry flaming grenade and the uh, Crack grenades are, you could think of them like melters, so they do good against vehicles and buildings. 
And you have, if you have two uh, Novite superiors, you have two grenades each. So she becomes, uh, Discord becomes quite a grenade uh, throwing um, squad around. So very good in early tier two for that sense. But we stay in tier one. Oh. Tier one standard kind of uh, squad is the Battle Sisters squad. Battle Sisters have more units than, for example, Space Marines, but are significantly cheaper. Can get veteran superior f um, for. Um, like having a squad leader around in tier 2, can get a flamer in tier 1 and heavy bolter in tier 2, can get phosphor grenades right from the get go in tier 1.5 if you have the uh, prismatine, pristine sanctuary, just give it, let it me do it right, the, come on, pristine sanctuary. The 1.2 jumping squad are your seraphims and seraphims are very very cool, they can jump around and they can shoot uh, they float around on their jetpacks and they can shoot even backwards. If you retreat, they will turn around and shoot the enemy with their twin pistols here. So really, really good, really high micro and high reward um, squad you can think of. You can use the jump ability right from the get-go. In tier 2, they become even better because you get a superior with an inferno pistol that she also fires um, when retreating, so really good. You can get Krakenades on the squad and the angelic visage. The visage is so good it um, not only affects the squad but also units uh, rather close around it and the visage does make units morale immune increases the damage they do it so you see the the area of it is quite quite large but in actual battle you want to make sure to activate it once you're near to uh, your range scores and then move in with the seraphims um, really really good ability it has an uptime i think of like 20 percent of the cooldown so um, most uh, people that start off with Seraphims have two Seraphims later on. Yeah, it's about 20%, so you can chain it to a maximum effect. It also affects other Seraphim squads. So don't click it all at once, chain it. One uh, effect after the other. Really good squad. I really, really like Seraphims. Um, going in tier two, you have access to two more squads. The first one is the Celestian squad. Celestians are like low model count, you can see here but are basically um, your battle sisters on steroids. They are beefy, they, they can take serious punishment, have really good damage with their standard boulders they have here against infantry and can have a, a veteran superior and a magifier for even more tankiness. The magifier can get krakenades and can get melter guns and multimelters. Um, so if you upgrade all of these, your squad have all um, melters and multimelters instead of their bolters. So let me tell you something about it. Um, in general these melters and multi-melters are good against um, buildings and mostly just buildings. So why, what is the reason uh, get to get a melter gun or multi-melter? If you go all and out anti-buildings you want to have all four. But what I like to do is to have them more like an anti-everything role because if you build them first you want to uh, probably fight some uh, infantry as well. A melter gun isn't really good against infantry. A multi-melter, however, does only like slightly less damage uh, against infantry than your bolter does. So getting the multi-melter is a no-brainer. This multi-melter does also have no setup time. So getting the multi-melters should always be your first priority over the melters. If you then face like massive vehicles or want to base trade or something, add the melter guns, of course. But in the beginning, I recommend only getting the multi-melters in f first. They are more expensive, like over double the uh, um, cost, but they are worth it. A new squad you can field in tier 2 are your Sephirim squad. The Sephirims are hidden behind two um, squad upgrades, so they are pretty expensive in a sense to field them first, like to have them available at first. So you want to be tier 2, you want to have researched the two infantry, uh, the, the squad cap upgrades, but they are basically uh, Seraphims on steroids. They have an Imagifier, no squad leader by themselves, but they can get plasma pistols, like these conflagration inferno pistols, not plasma pistols, inferno pistols on them if you have researched inferno pistols. They can also get plasma pistols if you haven't researched them, or if you want to go in melee, you can use power swords. They can uh, also be used in range stunts and behave similarly to the seraphims, like they shoot backwards as well, and having like three, I think it's later on even more, let me click it please at the beginning and later even six inferno pistols i, I repeat six inferno pistols 
uh, on a squad that can shoot in every direction when it's uh, uh, rotating around the enemy is just so so good so it's it's good that they are hidden behind a little paywall you can think of um, so they are not like uh, spammable right off the get-go they have a cap of two for a good reason they also have this angelic visage and can get crack grenades so um, I really like this squad one of my uh, favorite squads for the sisters for battle I have to say this is tier 2. In tier 3 you get access to 3 more infantry squads. Your Sister Repentia squad. The Sister Repentia are a melee super superiority uh, squad. They are really tanky and fast. They can get even faster if you use her, their ability Righteous Fervor, which is an toggable ability which uh, makes them uh, lose health, but they deal more damage and are faster. They have a Mistress around which increases their morale by, I, I think, a hefty amount, a hefty uh, morale uh, research already but I think they're starting uh, morale is like 300 and uh, she gives them 400 so it's like quite a lot of more morale so they don't break as easily the mistress itself is also quite a good uh, combatant by herself so getting her is uh, never uh, wrong in that sense new tier 2 uh, tier 3 squads you have access to is this paragon kill team it's a kill team so it's uh, limited it's special you could think of a leader has these uh, quote unquote standard squad members but can have um, you can use the squad as you like you have two melee variants you have a power maze that is good against all targets you have a master crafted power swords they have normally power swords but this um, Lady has mastercrafted power sword that gives uh, good damage against infantry commanders and demons And then you have two ranged opens with a heavy flamer which is good against infantry and demons And then you have a multi melder which is more good against or it's better against um, Vehicles and stuff uh, Do remember though that they they have normally like this storm bolter thing is at the side where are they here? Like the heavy boulders or storm boulders at the side. They have quite a big range you can see here if you give them the melters, the range isn't the greatest. So you might might choose one of the melee variants because they have then the uh, bigger ranged um, heavy bolters to their side. So maybe this is the better play to use them. I'd normally use get, get the range squad and then have to micro them quite a bit to the flamer shoots. Maybe maybe I should give them the melee variant and let them shoot from afar and then they can even teleport in if they want to. What can they shoot? Do they have? What the frag? They have rocket launchers at the side. That is interesting. That's the... Okay, another incentive to get the... I think it's with the Mastercraft the Power Sword. Powercon grenade launcher is also enabled. So, my... <laughs> My uh, opinion is clear. I would always get these Veteran Superiors with Mastercrafted Power Swords because they get also these really nice grenade launchers and whatnot. Cool. Nice that we talked about it. And last but not least, but serious not least, it's the Red Reputer Squad. The Red Reputer are similar to a Sephirim that they are hidden behind infantry cap researches, but it is here that you need to get all three of the infantry cap researches so you can feel them. They have a shared cap with the Seraphim of two, so you can get one each or two. Uh, Red Deputers or two Seraphims. Sephirims, sorry. Uh, Red Deputers are your, uh, how should I say, Devastator uh, variant, but they have, um, uh, are better because they are tier 3. And they can get Volk tight coverings. You need a Relic, I think, for that, and maybe even tier 4. And they are also limited in numbers, as you can see here. And then you can get uh, exchange the Heavy Bolters for Heavy Flamers or multi melters, depending on what you want to do. You can also get the Sister Hospitaler for some health regeneration, um, which is okay. Um, but you normally want to have your health regeneration closer to the front line, so uh, may or may not be good. Um, mm -hmm. And it's all squad immune to poison, confusion, and stun effects, and most charm powers. So, okay, this this makes a really good uh, increased uh, health regeneration. It's also nice to have, of course, but um, you normally want to position your red beauties in the sense that they are not focused. You can't always prevent that, of course, but yeah. Okay, so the, the leader is a lot better than I first anticipated. Okay. Second to last, we will now talk about the vehicles. And you see just an amount of vehicles that the vehicles aren't your main focus of this faction. They are, as I said, supportive. The first supportive you have is, of course, a Rhino. Rhino is limited as it has quite a good uh, bolter at the front and can use also loud hailers. 
to increase the morale of units and decrease enemy morale. Uh, requires the same research as it is for the buildings. Later on the line you get access to uh, emulators. Emulators have a big old heavy flamer, twin uh, two heavy flamers and can be exchanged to multimelters for some anti-vehicle. The damage of this isn't like the greatest you have ever seen, but um, yeah, they don't have a limit and cost only three cap, I think. Yeah, so they are not as good as a predator, uh, you would um, can't, can't compare to a predator. Then you have the Exorcist. The Exorcist is nice uh, artillery piece, tier 3 I think, and the, the most important thing about it is the spread of the fires. Just look at it. It cannot really kill a singular squad or in that sense, but it has like kind of one of the biggest uh, disruption effects because of its big AoE you can ever think of. And um, if, if the... Can you please stop? Thanks. Um, it has organs where it shoots out, so it's really, <laughs> really nice in that sense. Um, but if you want to focus a singular vehicle or building, you can use the Hunter Killer missile, which is really nice. It has also like, I think, infinite range. So this may be a mistake to have. We is this infinite range? Holy shit! It's map wide. Never, never knew about that. If this is extremely long range. Maybe it's extremely long range is in this uh, rather small map. It's map wide in a bigger map. It may not be small um, map wide and then we have the Castigore. The Castigore is a new unit in 6.9. It is it is a predator. It's limited to two um, Can use um, various weapons like twin auto cannons a battle cannon Well, yeah, and if you have tier 2 and relic, I think you can have twin the glass cannons um, I like all weapons choices to be honest um, Mostly auto cannons and battle cannons. Of course, the last cannons is superior if you are uh, higher on tech. And then you have the Penitent Engine. The Penitent Engine is a melee walker vehicle on steroids. It is a tier 4 walker, so it packs a punch, has a lot of HP, has heavy flamers by default, and you see this these, wah, thingies here that will hurt. Can take a punishment and also deal a lot of punishment. And you can also exchange the uh, Flamers now to heavy bolters or multimelters for quite a price. It still retains its melee, um, melee. How should I say? Strength. It's uh, I think only a placement for the guns. The uh, big old, um, whatever you want to call it, like gears or whatever, still remain. So they are now on the outside instead of the inside because they are bigger. But yeah, you can see um, that it's mainly used for melee combat, but if you want to stick it in range, you now have also uh, uh, possibilities to do so. Last but certainly not least, we have this Lightning Fighter Jet. Lightning Fighter is a tier 2 air vehicle, limited to 4, which was really good in vanilla, has less cannons for air fight and an auto cannon for um, ground fight, but as most vanilla week, uh, flyers, they have now learned to aim their less cannons down, so this Lightning Fighter becomes uh, more Versatile against ground targets in that sense is limited to five. I think it also costs like four cap So it's Two cap. Oh, I take that back only two and it's limited to five So it will be half your population if you spam them. They're really good um, against basically everything really good uh, uh, Thing to have on the field the range is okay ish can be targeted down by long-ranged uh, anti-air of course and lastly, we will talk about the Living Saints and the Archangel. These are your Relic units and then your Tier 2 Titan. The Living Saints, you have the Saint Anais, which is quote unquote your vanilla saint. All these saints can jump, all these saints are faithful as heck and yeah, can, can generate quite a lot of faith. She has the Flame of the Ardent Blade, which um, does like this big old um, cone fire and they all have this miraculous in Intervention. If the, lines, uh, if the living saint fades, falls in battle, her incredible fate will allow her to rise again. Has like two minutes cooldown or something, so if you kill her once, she gets back up. I'm not sure if she is full health, but as uh, she has not the biggest health pool uh, compared to, like, say, a Platzos or an avatar of Kane, you have like uh, lower health but two lives in that sense. The two new saints are Living Saint Emmeline. Emmeline also has this miraculous intervention, has now a Fiend Bane Strike, which does an AoE 
flaming uh, attack here, which does some good uh, damage over time in this area. Um, and does she have an aura? Has a constant aura of justice that increases the accuracy of all troops around her. So I prefer her over Anais just because of this aura. I always like to have auras that make my units around my big units better. That's, that's just me. <laughs> and Living Saints Arabelle is quite the opposite. She herself is quite a big combatant, does not have a active ability, but she does really good damage. Um, she only has has less health, but she, as I said, is better. But she has an aura that, um, how should I say? What is it called? Although outright deadly, her frenzied dem whatever demoralizes, demoral demoralizes all sisters around her. So she has a moral degeneration aura for friendly units around. It's also visible in in the in the aura around them. So they get this little thing here that looks similar to uh, what um, it, it decreases the more maximum morale. I remember now. Look at going up again. So it's quite a hefty morale damage you get from that. Uh, she herself seems to be like really really deadly and uh, making up with her flames her wings are also on fire which the others are not so yeah she does like fire damage around it neighbor enemies especially those engaged in melee also protect you to the damage so yeah she has also a damage aura around her so she's more of a uh how should i say lonely fighter you don't want to have them have her near your fighting squads or your uh, other squads need to be as far away that this aura does not uh, work it does Still work on the Red Computer Squad. Does it still do? Or when does the effect kick in? Here. So it's like this range. Looks like the range of the standard bolter range would be suffice. So having heavy, heavy bolter squads um, supporting your Living Saint will still work. Uh, charging in other melee squads may not be the best part, but remember that your sister Repentia squads have big morale pools to begin with, so they may not suffer as much as I make it uh, to be here. And last but surely not Lange is your Archangel Alicia Dominica. She is a tier 2 titan. Look at her health pool, she does really good damage. She can fly around us, yeah, with her Arden Blade or whatever, like this big old uh, Demon Slayer Blade, whatever it's called. And it's, she's all golden, has, has four wings and is all golden. She's just amazing. She can jump around and has this Divine Resurrection. This is not the Miraculous Intervention. The Miraculous Intervention always kicks in and has a cooldown. This um, Divine Resurrection has a chance. It's like 25%, um, like one in four, but has the, ability, has the possibility to go off again and again and again. So if you're lucky, you will never lose her. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can do the math for yourself. It's really um, odd to happen that she will die eventually, for sure. Okay, that's the more or less standard units. I have one safe game prepared, prepared where I show you some PVE only uh, units. Not all, but some of the more cool and unique ones. So see you in a second. And here we are in the. Uh, safe game of a little survival game I have gotten and the first special unit just reminds me that I have completely forgotten to tell you about the death cult assassin which is also a commander you can get it's a tier 2 tier 2 or tier 3 commander assassin unit that can is infiltrated and is really good at killing enemy commanders has also passive that uh, allows you also to uh, evade some damage I think but yeah she's uh, Commander Killing Unit and this uh, Emperor's Blade Death Cult Assassin is like from Drakengard, I think. Um, call, call me out if this is wrong. And uh, she's just a replacement to look really cool. I don't think she has any more stats compared to the standard Death Cult Assassin, but she really looks cool. We get her in Survival and Campaign. Speaking of Campaign, we, there are units like these uh, special uh, Battle Sister squads and the special Seraphim squads that have um, some small um, deviations from the standard one. This, for example, this um, Battle Sisters squads can get Volk, Volkite chargers instead of heavy bolters. Yeah, but we, I will talk about the uh, campaign um, honor guards a bit more in the tech tree because they are, for the most part, not as uh, much different than your standard uh, units, having some 
minor details. But in survival, you can get a special exorcist, this exorcist Sanctorum, which is uh, unlike the uh, unlike the one uh, exorcist we had in in the standard game. It has only singular fighting, so uh, singular volley, so it's good, uh, better against singular targets, whereas the exorcist is better against uh, large troops. And then we have the Sisters of Silence. Everybody's asking for Sisters of Silence. Uh, not as much as they are talking about Custodian, but yeah, you have it. <laughs> Witch Seeker Sisters of Silence squad can use Rella ability because they have the Witch Seeker superior and she can they can get Flamers, of course. So <laughs> there you have them. Uh, really cool looking squad. Um, Sisters of Silence, I think, are, are meant to make an appearance sometime in the far future as well. So in the meantime, you can field them in survival. Tier for survival if you play uh, if you're tier 4 have reinforcements on and play on harder or insane if you play on harder and insane the other unit you will get also in if tier 4 is this beauty here look at this it's a inquisitorial fire sword basically a fire themed bane blade has heavy bolters has these are last cannons for example has this big flamer thingy at the side so I like it. Has the battle cannon as well to shoot um, boom, this artillery like stuff, and also can use smoke launchers. So, really, really nice looking unit. I think also voiced by yours truly, um, Matthew the Frenchie. So, cre really cool unit. So, you can see what you can field in survival here as well. These are all survival exclusive units. The one additional unit is another, uh, what is it called? No white squad to have, but yeah, this is. This is your survival loadout, you could think, your special uh, survival units. We will now jump into the tech trees where I will talk about all the research about the uh, campaign exclusive units, the honor guards, and um, there's one campaign exclusive unit I will uh, talk about as well that I will not show here because it's I don't want to load another safe game. And uh, the tier strengths of the uh, system of battle I will also talk about. So see you in a second. And here we are on the tech tree document. As usual, I don't want to talk about every single unit. Uh, I want to, uh, uh, how should I say, tell you some specific uh, stuff. The first one is that I have made all things considering faith. Like if a unit is faithful, like with this passive, or if units have faith abilities, I marked them in red. So they stand out a bit. So you know, okay, this is generating faith or this is costing faith, uh, depending if it's an active ability or if it's a passive faithful ability. Like every unit that has this faithful passive here will generate faith over time. Um, quickly go over the researches. I think researches in your HQ are the two um, extra faith from your missionary. In your barracks you can get, of course, your uh, cap upgrades, your um, grenade upgrades, and that's pretty much it. In your vehicle building you can get the uh, cap increases, then you can get inflagation uh, ability. I forgot to show you about the emulator where it just spins around and does a lot of uh, fire around it. And you can get more HP for your vehicles. And this one increases the damage of uh, multi melters for uh, various units like your retributors, your what is it called again? Your um, please tell me what, what do you call it again? Emulator. It increases damage by quite a bit, so yeah, these kind of things. And as you see, your repentia is tier 4. Um, there's of course the um, upgrade for your tier 2 titans in your titan building, but now let's talk about the upgrades in your prismid, pristine sanctuary. This is the blessed ammunition ability that reduces, or it states at least, that your units um, do not care about cover anymore. Your bolters and heavy bolters, not your flamers. But I think I looked it up, it also only decreases the uh, damage penalty you could think of, of heavy cover um, and la light cover by 50%. So they get, yeah, it's it's um, in my in my book uh, upgrade I would not ever get. Very good are the Inferno Pistols, of course, because it gives your cannon as an Inferno Pistol and all your tier 2 and uh, bigger commanders Inferno Pistols as well. This is your Loud Hailers, this is your Special Commander Power Swords that can get even more special power swords in tier 2. These are your armor upgrade for all your infantry. Highly, highly um, recommended to get. This is your heavy weapon increase. 
needed if you want to field more heavy weapons, like for your Seraphims, like for Sephirims and uh, your Battle Sisters. Not needed for your Celestian squads, however. Then this is a general damage increase for all your ranged units in tier 3, also highly recommended to get. And this charge is also recommended to get if you use Repentias. I tend to use my Seraphims in range, so I don't get it um, if I do not have Salads on the field, like the Salads, uh, I mean the Repentia Sister Squads. Um, if you are better than me, you would probably get it anyway and toggle the ranged and melee stance of your Seraphims or your um, Seraphims and have them knock around enemies. The upgrades you can get in your um, Divine Reliquary here are the a morale slash increase in faith production upgrades like one right from the get-go and the second one is hidden behind tier 4 your commander upgrades in tier 2 and tier 3 and the ability for your confessor right away in tier 2 you need to have the holy reliquary to build the confessor and then can get immediately the act of faith this is the emperor's wrath um, aoe ability and this is the ascension ability for your canoness as of 6.9, you get all these Commander Walkie and the listing posts, so you can start off with two uh, stuff already in Tier 1, and then later on get uh, the uh, more Commander Walkie, the last one even requiring Tier 4 and a Relic. And if you have all nine uh, Commander, this is wrong, this month needs to be nine, I will change that, then you can get the tenth one, which gives you a AoE damage over time ability. Uh, around your cannoness. Mind you, you that these um, abilities do not count over to your Abyss more than wall. So if you plan using the Abyss, do not get any war gear because it will not carry over. Yeah, your turrets and stuff is pretty much standard here, so I will not talk about that much. What I will talk about, however, is the campaign units. I just see that your uh, assassin I forgot to talk about also has detection so infiltrated universe detection is also very useful most of the times let's talk about honor guard units um, you can get another servitor which has more HP but it's nothing special you can get a missionary in campaign which has access to all extra phrase right from the get-go similar to your missionary then you have this Empress uh, the special assassin which does nothing special than your standard assassin but probably better your Novite Sisters is not special and this is your Battle Sisters squad which is special in the sense that it can has Volkheit uh, stuff. And then you have the Sephirim, the, not Sephirim, the Seraphim commander, uh, uh, Honor Guard, which has access to grenades right from the get-go as did your, do your um, sisters. And <clears throat> they can also get Volkheit uh, weaponry and later on even, ah, uh, this is the passive, so Volkheit uh, revolvers or what are they called? For the for the seraphims are really nice to have your celestial squad is special in the sense that they can get the commander and everything right from the get-go and start off with um crack grenades the magifier however is still locked behind in tier 2.5 or tier 2. the mistress squad here is in a uh, sense special that it's not um how should i say it's not repent here it's only three mistresses uh, together uh, giving the pain to the enemy and this is your sisters of silence they can get flamers they have <coughs> sorry the leader which is faithful the immolator is the standard immolator this is your special artillery squad and this is your faith plate your fire sword whatever you want to call it um, so this is that out of the way let's talk about tier strength the uh, sisters of battle uh, naked tier one isn't as strong as for example your space marines tier one because your battle sisters do um, bleed more models they are cheaper but um, also die more quickly are a little faster on their feet but where they are in my book better than for example the space marines that everyone uh, compares to is tier 1.5 because of the seraphims they are just so so good you can also get flamers and whatnot in front of the pistol on your cannoners but the seraphims uh, seraphim opener is really strong if you are capable of using them um, wisely you can use them to snipe out um, builders you can use them to decap stuff you can use them to uh, snipe out weak squads basically all an assault marine can do they can do but better 
Only thing they cannot do as much is tank damage. But yeah, they are really, really good. Um, maybe we look here. Yes, yeah, you can see it. It requires a pris pristine sanctuary. Tier 2, early tier 2 is also really good in the sense that you have really good unit in the in terms of the Celestians and the first vehicles you can feel are also really good. Uh, the Rhino and the fighter jet in particular to name these two. The um, emulator is good but um, I think for, for my taste it's a bit too pricey for what it does uh, for the most part. So tier 2 is very strong. Um, um, especially if you also get the uh, squad cap upgrades and can field some Zephyrims as well, get Krakenades and whatnot. Tier 3 is okay-ish. You have another commander, you have the Rependia, the Retributor. Okay, it's actually become better in, in Unification now that you have Retributor and this Kill Team squad, so it's it's solid. You also get access to the Casting Gold. Yeah, so it's a solid Tier 3 um, with all the upgrades as well for your Multimelter, so I like it. Um, the first tier 4 isn't uh, as good because you only get uh, one, where is it, one special unit here and mm, like this cannoness here, so you don't have like super heavies and whatnot, uh, some can field, but your tier, um, your titan tiers like your, your archangel later on is really nice because you have this saints, you have this archangel, then you have your, your saints from here, so you have saints all around that can um, deal quite a lot of damage and tank as well. And you see here one special unit that I would have almost forget to talk about, it's Saint Sabbat. Saint Sabbat is, uh, can be fielded additional to these two, um, but it's campaign only, campaign here, game mode campaign, and you have a special requirement, you need to defeat the uh, Imperial Guards stronger, then she will be enabled for your Sisters of Battle playthrough. So yeah, if you finish the uh, G campaign, legitimate, not like with the I win button, you get her enabled. So she is also um, like you have then the trifecta of this tier uh, one Titan commander squad here, this tech team you could think of. So really, really uh, nice to have. So they are tier one Titan, um, you could say tier, whatever you want to call it, is really good. Your tier four in, uh, in general is a little flat. But yeah, your tier 2 to tier 3 is really, really solid. You normally want to enter game in tier 2 or tier 3, preferably, or play for the very uh, long game and get your saints out. Okay, let me think about... No, that's basically all I want to talk here. Now we will jump over to the build orders. And here we are in the build order document where you see at first, of course, the quote-unquote standard build order. I would always recommend to go these Novat Sisters either before or after your missionary, after you get the second builder. Second builder is uh, fielded so fast, you always um, always want to have it. Get the barracks, get uh, battle sisters. They are cheap because they um, also start with only four models, but they are um, cheaper per model. And get your cannoness, get a generator. And later on, you want to field and other battle sisters to have something to defend you <coughs> in tier 1 before you then later, uh, um, how should I say, get tier 2. As you see here, I have not recommended to get a second generator. This is mostly because I recommend a relatively fast tier 2. You do not want to waste too much time upgrading listing posts because the power spike, the, the strength of sisters of battle come uh, into play in tier 2. Their tier 1 without uh, seraphims are, isn't the strongest. You can, however, play a heavy tier 1 if you want to. There you, of course, want to have uh, your Inferno Pistol on your Cannonist. There is even an opener where you just play the Cannonist with Inferno Pistol, which I do not like, so I have not included it here. Um, you can get the grenades, which are really good. That's uh, damage over time grenades, so they have knockback and damage over time, um, like burning the enemies. It's like phosphor grenades or whatever you want to call it. And you can get flamers. <coughs> the flamers for the Sisters of Battle are really good, I have to say. Then, of course, you get a later tier 2 than you would normally get. Seraphims, as, is, as you see here, you can also use. Then I wouldn't get the Snow White Squad because you want all the resources uh, for your Seraphims, especially that you need power to reinforce. Getting all this leaves you with only, I think, 10 power remaining in your bank, so you want to have at some point a generator so you can reinforce them if need be. It's better, of course, if you do not need to reinforce them and can get the earlier tier 2. 
really good uh, at harassing enemies with this. Also gives you a good um, start in tier two with the uh, um, mm, visage ability, which uh, gives you morale, immunity, and damage increase to a squad. So going with this in tier two and then adding Celestians that get this buff, for example, is really powerful as well. You can get early grenades where you basically skip the cannoners, skip um, also the uh, Novites because the Novites do not get grenades in tier 1, only in tier 2 with the squad leader. So these cost 1 population cap and these cost 2, so this all adds up to 10, so you don't need to get a, a unit cap upgrade. You want to get 3 battle sisters right off the way, I see here is a little thingy missing that I will add. Then get the grenades, then later even add another sister squad, get flamers. Do not get any upgrades because the only upgrade you can get um, are bene is benefiting the two upgrades you can get is be only benefiting your cannoners and not your standard squads and then go to tier 2 and then play from there. You can also rush to tier 2. Um, the cool thing about rushing tier 2 is that you can still have three capo units out because they are really cheap. Um, yeah, and then you're at tier 2 in a very fast manner and can rush, I don't know, vehicles or can rush um, Celestians. I have seen the Celestian rushes being very uh, effective as Celestians are just so good. So ways you, you can do it. As usual, you are really, really undefended, even more undefended than other factions because these missionaries have no real combat uh, capabilities. Then here's the little servitor rush um, thingy I was talking about, the uh, cheese um, you can do. It's really powerful in the sense that you use all four servitors to hack down hack on the enemy HQ or barracks. Don't use it on listening posts because this is an all-in if there's an all-in in the book this is the earliest all-in whatever you want to call it. Um, you want to kill the enemy HQ and the enemy builders leaving them with no way to rebuilding their stuff. This is the goal of this. You want to use the uh, uh, servitors to take down the enemy HQ. The enemy HQ, if it gets repaired, you then uh, if it gets repaired by builders, you have your four infantry squads around here to focus down the builders and run these guys off. Wait for the cooldown to recharge. Run again in, kill the HQ. And once the HQ and all the builders is down, you can decide to run back, build a power generator and whatnot to get it here too. But the enemy by that point has lost because. It, uh, the enemy is stuck with the builders it has and cannot rebuild. And not the HQ and is stuck with the barracks or whatever building it has uh, and can produce stuff, but cannot build listening posts even. So yeah, by this point you have one. Does not work, of course, against Tyranids, which <laughs> can just uh, rebuild from space. So uh, yeah, Th it works in that sense that if you... Um, no, it doesn't work really. They can always be built. They can get cap points, can build... Can they build spore kimnes without an HQ? They cannot. So if they have no spore kimnes and no HQ, there's no way for them to um, get any influence. So that's also a KO move in that sense, but harder to pull off. Don't use it um, <laughs> too often. And uh, yeah, if, uh, if you use it against a player who is not as good as yourself, uh, they will rage, for example, but it can be held off, of course, if the enemy scouts it, or at least after the first round of servitors coming in, the enemy must react in a way that it sends back all fighting squads near the HQ and snipes out these servitors. Going this opener leaves you with basically no income at all. So this these units you have, these, this is the units you have for the first few minutes, like for, for the first complete game you can think of, because it's a fast game. So losing uh, servitors is really, really painful um, because you normally do not, cannot replace them easily. So yeah, can be countered. So it's an all-in, and but can be countered, so it's a balance in my book. Also remember that this ability of the uh, servitors to dismantle takes four seconds to go off. So you want to go in with all four, all activating the ability at once that at least like two or three go through. I think you need for an HQ, for example, for Tau, like six dismantle uh, abilities without the enemy repairing. So it's like to six to seven uses. So you have to, ideally, uh, the HQ is down with the second row of attacks. But as I said, it can be countered. The enemy can kill the servitors and then you're screwed, <laughs> basically, because these battle systems by themselves will not win you the game. Um, there's one last... Um, 
opener here. It's Hero Selena Agna, where you basically get your cannoners, get your hero upgrades, uh, commander war gear upgrades from your listening posts, similar to what I have shown you in the uh, Space Marines. It's absolutely not optimal, but a fun way to play if you are, for example, playing against your friends and you know they are a little weaker than you, you can opt to make this little weird opener here, for example. So not optimal, but fun. Okay, with all these build orders out of the way, we will now jump into a replay, a game that I have played against Yasu uh, the other day. I, I tried to look up games of other people playing Sisters of Battle, but all uh, games I could find were older. But um, maybe I take that back. Uh, I will look again to find some Sisters of Battle replays and we maybe see the games I have played the game I have played against Yasu, or maybe a completely other game. You will see in a second, but I <laughs> will not know by now. <laughs> and here we are in the replay where you see uh, playing Yasu 55 Space Marines against my Sisters of Battle. I double checked, and all the replays I could find were not from this version uh, for Sisters of Battle. So you are stuck again seeing me fight. I play a opener that is similar but not the same to the openers I have in my. Uh, build order document Faith is the only true in the sense that I will get initial squads like get the, the no white get the uh, missionary two builders into a uh, sister of battle into cannoners but I will not get a second battle sister squads because I want to have relatively quick tier 2 this is not the, not the first match I played against the Azul Space Marines in one match he just obliterated me with scout marines so i kind of know what is heading my way so um, i adjusted my strat mm, that's a lie i didn't adjust uh, in the first game i was just obliterated by his uh, playstyle you could say um, it was on a different map so we see how this one pans out so we have some battle sisters capping to help the missionary and the no white squads to cap so i focus the uh, squad attention on this side getting my cannoners out soon ish so i want to have an assault on this side while not really uh, attacking on this other side just capping the uh, points and stuff getting these and posts up all the good stuff um yeah and we see some uh, scouts already moving in this direction they most certainly want to decap this point but there is a battle system squad waiting so they will lose uh, one model for their troubles will retreat with this one and we see some tactical space marines already on the field on this side so my missionary on this side must uh, go get back but I see and try to force a reaction on the other side where I see an uncapped relic and I also see the scouts they try to kill this uh, servitor the servitor has not a lot of HP but these scouts don't deal a lot of damage either so I have this relic now that is um, Undefended, I sent my missionary over there, so they has something to do and I see the force commander on his side trying to defend his base, which is kind of similar because I have the cannoners on my base as well to defend. This servitor got rallied with the shift commander on this side, he uh, needs to go back. And other than that, I run away with my battle sisters trying to find builder units, because once when I'm here already, I, I can take my time killing some builders so he does not get his listening posts up as quickly as he likes. Uh, standing here with my cannoners, peeling off a model or two with from the uh, from the space mint is worthwhile. They killing my servitor is also worthwhile. But I have upgraded my listening post because I couldn't get um, the amount of listening posts I wanted to get. And on the other side, I'm focusing down these servitors, so he I think couldn't even finish this listening post and will not be able with this one as well. So. Now that that is killed, I need to run away. You see, the Snow Whites cost as much as a, a standard squad, but have a lower stats, so they can be a little, uh, how you say it, um, resource sink in a sense, but they can also be very useful. All this time, a missionary is capping the enemy uh, uh, relic, while these scouts have already uh, captured it, but. Um, I will most likely or hopefully not get uh, allow a servitor to get there. There's even a scout squad that is a little split up here will lose another model. But now I'm back in my base having the Snow White Sisters with only one model and now my um, cannoners is fighting into melee and gets his force commander by itself trading uh, okay-ish. 
but um, yeah, there is more to come. So there's a more or less fully reinforced squad of Space Marines coming in as well. And I tried to move her out, but she got stunned. For whatever reason, uh, the Force Commander can stun right away, which is something I didn't knew prior. I thought it has no special ability to see me using the chat a bit. <laughs> I was uh, not really liking this, but you can see my tier 2, I, which I have already uh, enabled, is 40% uh, done now. And I have two listening posts here to defend. I have my buildings in a very defensive way, uh, more or less lucky, you could say. And trying to hold to get tier 2. Good, the, the good thing is that I do have this relic here which gives me a, a fighting chance. Without this relic I would only have three points which would, which would be absolutely uh, de death already. But yeah, I have my listening pose. I try to keep this Novite sisters alive because I know it. once I hit tier 2 I can get her Novite superiors and uh, Inferno pistols that will be really good. <coughs> I'm trying to reinforce with all my uh, resources so I can hold this attack here. He for the most part has um, scouts which will add sniper rifles now and one squad of space mines so nothing that kills uh, buildings fast so this is my good thing. I actually also stopped reinforcing now getting inferno pistols. I am tier 2 now and now is the question what do I do? I get probably the superiors or yeah I go for Celestians. Normally I wanted to go for Sephirims but uh, having some space marines and scouts in your base is not uh, something you want to have where you uh, slowly but surely get your uh, pop cap increases. Other than that I have built this listening post here. My my uh, missionary is trying to cap or decap stuff from the enemy and now my celestials are on the field and I move them in. I rally them in right uh, in the get-go and now even uh, forcing melee combat they aren't uh, as bad in melee combat as you might think they have all uh, chain swords and you can see here <coughs> I almost lose the squad I actually completely lose the squad but it bought me time so I now can uh, run in with these they have one no white superior this these have their veteran superior I will probably add yes the next second superior so I have including with the cannoners now the cannoners I lost I have two leaders coming up uh, shortly another leader with some burner pistols and I try to focus on these very very expensive scouts that cost 80 I think uh, 85 um, requisition and some power if I kill a model with a sniper rifle so you can see here that I'm almost almost finishing this this scout marine squad just um, gets uh, how should I say safety nick of time I have now my grenades using a grenade here using a grenade here using grenades on my battle sister so I now can try to focus down the scout marines while also getting another missionary capping my own points so this is always a thing you need to remember Get your missionaries working. Get your, in general, get your points back whenever you can. And here, I, uh, you do not want to stay in, in the fight with these uh, tactical marines. You want to focus down these, these pesky, pesky scouts. And this is exact, exactly what I do. And while this is two squads of space marines now, um, they will try to to fight. I will try to run away and shoot while running. It's in my favor in this uh, this particular instance because they run away from me. Now my Celestian Sword, my second Celestian Sword is out, so this should give me the edge here. I actually get this point up already uh, as well, so I have now my half, more or less my half of the map, so I'm stabilizing. Getting a third, the first one died, so this is my the second Celestian on the field, you could say, the first one died, as I said. So having two Celestians is probably good enough, not sure if I get another one. Here I'm even um, fighting them in melee, I use the grenade and then stick uh, in melee because they wanted to stick in melee too. Normally you do not want to fight space marines in melee but if you have uh, grenades and superior numbers you can do it. This, uh, this Novite superior by itself also does quite good damage against uh, in melee I would say. Where are my two? Here's one Celestians, two Celestians here and you can see here I get the Imagifier for, for now. No, the match fire. Actually, two veteran superiors. This is a bug, is it? Yeah, it is a bug. I'm not sure how how this is uh, how this happens sometimes, but you can sometimes get two leaders in uh, one Celestian squad. Uh, I have no idea why, but in this instance, it's really favoring me, as you can see here, doing a lot of damage with their inferno pistols. Uh, now, actually, getting their multi melters, as I said, um, not the melters. And yeah, moving, moving on. 
now having the edge as well as I have taken the relic from uh, Yasu and Yasu has lost quite a lot of resources so and I have the Celestians here, the uh, Battle Sisters and the Novites all having grenades and stuff getting now the crack grenades as well to uh, start and kill this thing post. We'll decap it and then move into the base. So you can see where this is heading kind of because Yasu does not have a lot of income right now. He lost quite a lot of stuff and lost um, income as well getting now while well, thinking about getting Sephirims, I think I will get the uh, pop cap increase at some point, getting the blessed armor for now. I'm moving in and trying to scout where, what he is doing, because you can move in and be like, yeah, I destroyed this building, but I destroyed this building. You always want to find out what the enemy is doing, and he, I can see him going here, so I was imagining getting some vehicles or some production over here, but I have... Um, two Celestians with multi-melters and crack grenades, so they should be plenty. Getting now the uh, improve, improved field logistic, which is your squad cap increase, getting the armor upgrade and will later on trying to get Sephirims, but yeah, this game isn't going much longer indeed. So this was a win against uh, Yasu. I regularly use, uh, lose against him, like I, I lose more than I win against him, so I don't want to uh, give you a false, <coughs> how should I say, a false uh, picture of my strengths here. Yasu is, uh, is above my player strengths for the most part. So this was a game where I could get the edge by focusing down his uh, sniper um, scouts. Now I have the Raceback Recarius, but I, as I said, I have quite a lot of anti-vehicle capabilities. Okay, with this finishing moments I want to thank you for watching if you have some additional information please leave it in the comments if you want to correct me in some instances some information that I shared that are plain wrong please do it and other than that I yeah thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye bye